Welcome back, students. Um, this is going to be the demo for our first assignment, um, remote assignment that we're going to be doing. Um, bear with me. This is the first time that I've done any uh, video recorded demos. Um, usually I'm much more used to teaching in the classroom. Uh, under the assignment, there should be uh, some instructions and a an app for you to download. In the past, I've used math and rulers and we've taken photocopies and made grids on top of those, which then you would transfer onto your drawing paper. But with this app, it makes it much easier. All you have to do is plug in a photo, put in the correct dimensions um, for the canvas, which will be um, the size of your paper, 18 by 24, and click the appropriate grid marks and everything. I'll, I'll have all the instructions written down for you so that you can follow that. However, once you're finished with that part, there is some parts that you will need a ruler for, and we will do that. Um, I'll show you how to do that right now. So for this part of the assignment, we're going to grid our paper. Um, this way that we can transfer the information from our source material, which will be a gridded photograph, into a larger drawing. And we're basically, or simply, going to be transferring one small square at a time. It's kind of a tedious project, uh, process. However, it gives you exceptional results, and it's a good way to practice um, careful rendering and learn about the subtle sort of values and textures on the face as you do this. Um, so what you only need is a ruler, your 18 by 24 inch drawing pad, uh, a pencil, and an eraser. I recommend using something like a 2H pencil. That's probably the best. Um, if not, anything up to a 2B is fine. Just make sure that they're sharp and you really control the amount of pressure that you place on the pad. You want to make these lines as invisible as possible. The only, pe the only person that should be able to see these lines are, are you when you're up close. Um, if you put really heavy lines when making this grid, they are going to interfere and interrupt um, with the drawing process and get in the way. So let's just make them as light as possible from the get-go, and that'll make it much, much easier. So first off, make sure that you line up your ruler so that it's exactly to the edges of your page and really as close to the edge as possible. This will give you less opportunity for deflection. For the Art 17 students, I'm going to have you make a grid that goes every two inches. So simply two, four, six, eight, that sort of thing. I personally like to start on the two mark and then go four, six, eight, etc. It'll give you the same thing. I just like using this little line that's on my ruler as a way of lining it up perfectly with the edge of the page. Again, all the care that you can possibly take in this part of the process will translate into a better drawing later down. All right, so I'm gonna make a mark at four, six, eight, 10, 12, so on. And then I will do the same thing down at the bottom of my page, every two inches. You can see that. Try to make these marks light. And so on. And so you've gridded all the way across. And you'll do the same thing along the sides, the long sides of the page. So start over right here. Uh, remember that you have these annoying tabs here. Um, measure to the perforated line. If you measure to that line, that's going to give you the best results. Yes. Try to make your ruler nice and square to the edge, parallel to the edge, and again every two inches. 
art 18 students, intermediate drawing students, you're going to be doing the same exact process. However, instead of every two inches, I'm going to ask that you do every inch. It's going to give you a smaller and tighter grid to work from. Of course, it's going to take you more time. That's why you need intermediate drawing. And then down this side as well. So once you've done that, pardon me for a second, out of the way. Okay. You're going to line up the, the marks on either side of the page. Again, make sure your ruler is exactly in the right spot. Hold it so it doesn't move. And by only using just the pressure of the pencil, just the gravity, just the weight of the pencil itself, barely place it on the page and pull it across. That'll probably give you the lightest line possible. Um, if you put any downward pressure with your hand, onto the point of the pencil, it's going to be much darker. And then you'll have these annoying little lines and possibly even indents in your paper that you will have to contend with when you're drawing. And you don't want that. Instead, make them as light as humanly possible. For the sake of illustration, or for the demo, I believe I'll go ahead and just make these a little bit darker than I normally would so it's easier for you to see what I'm talking about. And then I continue all the way down the page. And so on. Same here. In the vertical direction, go ahead and line up my marks exactly right. Take your time with this. It's a matter. as light as possible. And you can imagine me just finishing this off all the way to the edges. Um, I go ahead and make these lines all the way this way and all the way down this way as well. Now, the trick to this assignment is to work square by square. Oftentimes in the past, I've had students that try to give themselves, use this grid to essentially make a, you know, a decent contour drawing and then essentially color it in with the value. But if you want the best results, nine times out of 10, if not more, if you work square by square explicitly, you'll be able to come up with a much superior drawing. So I insist that you work like this. Start with square number one and work the values in this square until this square is completely done. This one's pretty much white, so you can leave it white. Then I move to my next square which is this little section right here. There's bits of hair, background, and several different values that you need to capture. What I like to do is actually make a viewing window. This is a small aperture that I've cut out of a piece of graph paper. I've me measured it carefully so that it matches exactly the same size squares that I have on my paper, so that I'm forced to only see one square at a time. It's much easier if you work this way. Part of the problem with drawing, essentially, is that we tend to oh, make assumptions. Our brain tends to sort of sabotage uh, what it is that we're trying to do. And you know, when you see an eye or a nose or a mouth, it starts to draw things that shouldn't be there. This forces you to look strictly at the shapes and the colors and the values, the tonal values that are right in front of your face, and you're much more likely to copy them more exactly. 
I even go so far as to take my ruler and divide my aperture, this little viewing window, in half. This one happens to be an inch. Yours might be different. So I make a little mark on each halfway, half inch mark. What this essentially does is create sort of a crosshair in the middle of your aperture, which even makes it easier for you to have things line up and basically enter and exit the edges of this aperture where they're supposed to. And that way they will line up with the one below and the one to the side. Now, the assignment itself is a little bit tedious. It does take a lot of time. It's, it's a slow sort of process. However, it's really valuable in the sense that it allows you to really focus on small areas. It um, allows you to practice recreating and matching the value tones as closely as you possibly can in each one of these squares. And when you get to the subtleties of the face, these, these little tiny transitions of light and shadow, either from the side of the nose or over the cheek or along the side of the jaw, you get to really study them. Um, when you're finished, I mean, you'll have this glorious drawing of the portrait that looks amazing and I don't know, it, it's, it's just, uh, it allows you to practice sort of slowly hatching and building up your total values to get them as close as possible. Now, if you're in basic drawing class, I recommend that you do this in charcoal. I think charcoal would be the best choice. One, because we've been using charcoal quite a bit and because it allows you to get these really dark darks that you see in the picture. You can really build up your darks quite easily and just very slowly move in the direction of, of the textures, sort of like hatching in a sense to build up and, get the, and recreate the values. For my intermediate drawing students who are gonna be working on the smaller grid, I actually recommend that you use graphite. And the downfall to graphite is that it's harder to get these deeper blacks or these darker values, but you can get pretty close. The advantage though is that with such a small point and such a subtlety in the graphite, you can build up your values much more carefully. And with a, you know, essentially with lots of very slow back and forth, almost like hatch, hatching like marks and rolling of your pencil, you can build those values up almost to a sort of photorealism. Um, as you can see, I'm, I'm working from this source material. You will be doing any portrait that you like. Um, in the past, I've just recommended people take a photograph of themselves, but if you prefer and you know are mortified by the idea of drawing your own face, perhaps you can do a portrait of someone else. Um, the main thing is you really want the portrait to fill up the majority of the paper. You don't want a lot of body or other, other uh, I don't know, extra material in there to have to worry about. Really make it a clean headshot with just a little bit of shoulders and the face is taking up the majority of the page. Um, also, you wanna make sure that your photograph is of good quality. Make sure that you have nice lighting, either natural lighting with, with you know, sort of dramatic shadows, nice highlights. Um, if you have a very washed out um, photograph, like something like if you used a flash at a party or something, it's not gonna look nearly as, as impressive. You want a nice value range in this piece so that when it translates into the photograph, it'll, it'll have that same pleasing effect. Um, what else? Yep, I think that's it. If you have any questions, um, I'm not really sure how to do this because I'm used to teaching in person. However, I will be available via email pretty much anytime. And if you need to talk to me directly or if you want to set up some sort of video conference chat or, or something of that nature, I think what we can do is, is schedule appointments pretty much anytime on either a Tuesday or a Thursday. Just email me and we can work something out. But if your question is pretty general and you want to just email me a question, I, I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. I check my email quite often.
I believe that's it. So good luck. Take your time. This will take probably, oh, for the basic drawing students, at least the amount of about three class sessions, if not a tiny bit more. And for the intermediate drawing students who are working in smaller squares and the more subtle graphite, I'm going to say this is probably going to be more of a two and a half week project, um, just depending on the sort of time and speed that you put into it. If you can't, oh, and finally, if you can't print out a photocopy, if you if if that's not available to you, uh, let's say this uh, shelter in place order stays for a length of time and you don't have a photocopier at home or one that doesn't work, um, you can work from a screen. It is a little bit more chancy. Uh, you'll have to be more careful and pay closer attention to working with each individual square and not accidentally, you know, skipping and jumping to another part of the image. Just be careful. You can still work from a screen if you had to. But ideally, you would print this out because it gives you something physical that you can hang on to and, you know, work with in this way. Or putting a viewing window, or maybe even putting little tiny X's in the corner of each square when you finish one so that you don't accidentally do one twice or etc. All right, I hope that helps. Um, good luck. Thank you.